folks, hope you're okay today. Uh, street preaching in Manchester today. It was supposed to be in Oxford, but things went a bit personally. So, uh, yeah, uh, preaching. So, I'm just going to do a bit of preaching before I go on. So, God bless you, folks. Hi folks, hope you're okay today. We're just sharing the word of God today about Jesus and who Jesus is, that Jesus is the Son of God. And in the word of God, it says there's only one God. It says, I am the Lord. God bless you, bro. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another. Isaiah 42, verse 8. God wants the glory, God wants the honor, for He is the only true and living God. He is the one who created everything. He is the one that created everything in the universe. He is the one that created everything. He is the one that created all things. He is the one that created all things. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the great I Am. He is the great living God. It says, look to me and be saved and all your ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other, Isaiah 45, verse 22. That there is no other God. He says, look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other, Isaiah 45, verse 22. Look unto me. There's only one person to look to, and that is the living God. So how do we know the living God? How do we know the creator of the universe? How do we get to know the creator of the universe? How do we get to know him? Well, we need to know who he is. Who is this God? Who is God? It says, though he cause grief, yet he will show compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. Lamentations 3.22 He said he'll show compassion. So God is a God of compassion. God is a God of compassion. That's who God is. A God of compassion. A God of mercy. He says, with the merciful you will show merciful. With the merciful you will show yourself merciful. Psalm 18 verse 24 with the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. God is a merciful and gracious God. He is a loving God. He is a loving God. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. I have loved you, says the Lord. Malachi chapter 1 verse 2. Indeed it was for my own peace that I have great bitterness, for you have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption, for you have cast all my sins behind your back. So God is a gracious God. God is a loving God. He's not only a gracious God, he's not only a loving God, but he's a holy God. In Isaiah, says in Isaiah chapter 6, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. So God is a loving God. God is a gracious God. And God is a holy God. God bless you guys. God is a holy God. God is a gracious God. And God is a holy God. That is the character of God. Now how do we get to know this God? How do we get right with this God? We must seek Him. 
The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul who seeks Him. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 25. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul who seeks Him. God is good to those who seek Him. If you seek Him and desire Him, you will find Him. If you seek Him, you will find Him. Yeah. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Those who seek me diligently will find me. If you seek God diligently, you will find Him. If you seek Him diligently, you will find Him. If you desire God, and if you want to know God, and if you diligently seek for Him, you will find Him, my friend. You will find God, and God will reveal Himself to you if you seek after Him. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. If you search as for hidden treasure, then you will find the knowledge of God. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 4 and 5. If you search for the hidden treasures, then you will find the knowledge of God. If you search for hidden treasure, if you search for God as He is treasure, you will find Him. But if you despise God and if you reject God, and if you do not value God, then you'll never find God. You'll never know God. But if you seek Him and desire Him, you will find Him. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with your with all your heart. With all your heart. You see, you've got to seek God with all your heart. You've got to want to know God above everything else. He's got to be more important to you than anything else in your life. Then if God is more important to you than anything in your life, then you will find Him. Then you will meet with God. Then you will know God. If He is everything to you, you will meet Him. But you've got to treasure Him, desire Him. More than anything else in your life, you've got to treasure God and you will find Him. But as for me, I would seek God and to God I would commit my cause. For as for me, I would seek God and to God I would commit my cause. Job chapter 5 verse 8. In other words, he's saying, I'm going to commit my life to Him and I'm going to seek Him and I'm going to desire Him and I'm going to live for Him and I want to know Him. And unless you have that passion, unless you have that desire, you will never know God. If you love your football more than God, you'll not find God. If you love your cricket more than God, you'll not find God. If you love your pop music more than God, you'll not find God. If you love your shoes, your car, your house, if you love anything more than God, you will not find God. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. God is waiting for you to believe. He's waiting for you to repent. He's waiting for you to repent. He's waiting for you to believe. And if you repent and if you believe, you'll find Him. If you repent and if you believe, you'll find Him. For God is a great God. God is a mighty God. God is a powerful God. And if you seek Him with all your heart, you'll find Him. Yes, you will. God bless you. Have a lovely day, ladies. If you seek Him, you will find Him. If you seek God, you will find Him. But you've got to seek Him with all your heart. You've got to desire Him with all your heart. And when you desire Him and when you seek Him, you will meet with God. And God will meet with you. If you search as for hidden treasure, then you will find the knowledge of God. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 4 and 5. 
If you search for hidden treasure, then you will find the knowledge of God. Men try to peer into science. Hey Lord, thank you so much for your kindness. Thank you, God bless you. If you seek him with all your heart, you'll find him. You gotta treasure him more than anything else in this world. You gotta treasure him more than money, more than power, more than anything in your life. And then you will find him. You will find him. But you've gotta treasure him. You gotta treasure him. You gotta honor him and treasure him and glory in him and say, I wanna know this living God. I want to know this living God. And you've got to treasure Him and desire Him and want Him more than anything else in your life. And if you desire Him, you will find Him. God wants you to come to Him. God wants you to come to Him. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn his face from you if you return to him. 2 Chronicles chapter 30 verse 9. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn his face from you if you return to him. 2 Chronicles chapter 30 verse 9. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn his face from you if you return to him. The Lord God is gracious and merciful. And if you turn to God, God will forgive you. If you turn to God, God will forgive you. God died for you. God shed his blood for you. God gave his life on a cross. God died on that cross and he died on that cross to bring you home. He died on that cross to bring you home, my friend. He died on that cross to bring you home into heaven's glory, into heaven's camp, into the heavenly places of God. He came and died on that cross to rescue you. And if you seek God with all your heart, you will find Him. No one's rescued me yet, mate. God I'm still in help. God bless you. Shit. God bless you. You seek after God, you will find Him. For God provided a sacrifice for you. God gave you a sacrifice that you may come home to glory. That's why he died on that cross. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to those who call upon you. Psalm 86 verse 5. In the riches of God's mercy, and in the riches of God's love, and in the riches of God's power, in all the riches of God and who God is, in all His glory and majesty, God paid your debt. He paid your debt in full. He paid your debt in full with the blood of Jesus. For the blood of Jesus died. And the blood of Jesus was shed for you. And when Christ died on that cross, He was paying your debt on that cross. Every debt that you owe, Every debt that you owe God, He paid for you. And He was crushed on the cross. He was crushed on that cross for you. He was crushed on that cross. Bore your sin. And took the wrath that you deserve. The wrath of God fell upon Jesus. And when Jesus was dying on that cross, He was dying as your substitute. And he was dying as your sacrifice to redeem you from hell and bring you home. That's why he died on that cross. He died on that cross to redeem you. He gave his life that you may have life 
laid down his life that you may have life. God bless you. He laid down his life that you may have life. That you may come into the presence of God. That you may come into the courtrooms of the living God who created the universe, who created the mountains, who created everything. God who made all things. God who is your creator. He made a way that you may be clean. But if you reject Jesus, and if you reject him and say, Lord, I don't want to believe you. Jesus, I don't want to trust in you. Jesus, I don't believe that you are the Son of God. Then if you say that and believe that, Jesus said there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For there will be out of darkness forever and ever for those who reject the Savior and the living God. Doesn't matter how politically correct the age is. It doesn't matter what laws men make. It doesn't matter if you believe what I say or not believe. It doesn't matter if you ignore me or not ignore me. The fierce wrath of God is coming upon the world. There is a wrath of God. There is a wrath and judgment of God. That comes. God bless you. But his love is great. His love is wonderful. His love is astounding. His love is merciful. His love is gracious. That Christ would come and die for you. That Christ died. That Christ, the Son of God, laid down his life and gave his life for you. That you may have life that you may be forgiven. My dear, dear friends, cannot you see that your life is both short? Cannot you see that your life will end one day? Cannot you see that your life will end one day? That your life will end one day and then there is the day of judgment. There is that fearful day of judgment. The fearful day of judgment day. Cannot you see that the world has drunk your mind? Cannot you see that the world has poisoned your mind and that you've been drunk by the spirit of the age? That the age, spirit of the age has drugged you and that you're drugged by the television, you're drugged by the media, you're drugged by the spirit of this age? This age has gripped your heart and you cannot see spiritual realities. You cannot see the reality of God. You cannot even see the reality of Christ who gave his life for you. And you walk like a mist in this world. And one day, one day it all ends. One day you die. And when you die, it's not the end. Then is the judgment day. That judgment day will be a fearful day, a terrible day, a horrible day. For on that day, man will know how great God is. For on that day, man will shake at the greatness and the majesty of God. On that day, man will cry and scream and hide under rocks trying to run away from the wrath of God. On that day, great leaders will cower and shake. On that day, men and women will cry out and ask for mercy, but there will be no mercy because it will be the day of judgment. It will be the day, the last day, the terrible day, the day of judgment. So now is the day. Now is the time. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. James chapter 4, verse 8. Draw near to God. Hey, mate, you're right. Draw near to God, bro, and he will draw near to you. Do you believe in God? No? Why not? Any reasons why? You believe in evolution? Yes? 
You believe in God, yeah? Jesus died, yeah? He died for you, Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. If you draw near to God, He will draw near to you. He will come to you and He will forgive you. He will cleanse you and He will forgive you, but you have to draw near to Him. If you come to God and ask for God's mercy and ask for God's forgiveness, He will forgive you. He will forgive you of all your mistakes. He will forgive you of all your failure. He will forgive you of every mistake that you have ever made. He will forgive you and it will be blotted out forever and ever and you will be forgiven. Any mistake that you've ever made, the moment you believe in Jesus, you're wiped clean, you're forgiven. But you've got to come to Him. You've got to come to Christ for that forgiveness, if you want that forgiveness. And that forgiveness is there and offered to you today. It's offered to you in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, He paid the penalty for you. Jesus Christ paid the debt for you. He paid it all in full because He was the Messiah, the Holy One, perfect in all His perfection, in all His glory. And He paid your debt for you. The one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. The one who comes to me, I by no means cast out. The one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. The one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. He will not cast you out, but take you in, if you come to God. He will not push you away, but He will draw you if you come to God. You've got to come to Him, and as you come to Him, He will not push you away, but He will forgive you. He will cleanse you. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Isaiah 55 verse 1. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you into, who have no money, come and buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money, without price. What Isaiah is saying here, if, if you have no money or nothing, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have nothing, if you're empty, you feel. You might feel that you've got nothing to offer God. But if you come to Him, He will forgive you. If you come to Him, He will cleanse you. No matter what, He will forgive you. He will forgive you if you come to Jesus. If you come to the Lord, you might feel empty, you might feel you've got no strength, but if you come to Him, He'll forgive you. You might feel you can't go on, but if you come to Him, He'll forgive you. You might feel that you have intellectual questions that cannot be answered, but if you come to Him, He will forgive you. You might feel you can't cope, but if you come to Him, He'll forgive you. You might feel lost. Amen. But if you come to him, God bless you, But if you come to him, he will forgive you. If you come to him, he will forgive you. If you come to him, he will forgive you. He will forgive you. If you come to him and say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, have mercy upon me. He will forgive you. He will wash you. He will cleanse you. He will show you His mercy. He will show you His grace. He will show you His love. He will show you His kindness. He will wrap His arms around you. He'll encircle you with His forgiveness. He'll encircle you with His love. He'll encircle you with His mercy. He will show His kindness to you. If you come to Him in your emptiness, in your need, 
If you come to him with a need, he will forgive you and cleanse you. God bless you. He will restore you. He will cleanse you. He will show you mercy. He will show you his love. But you got to come to him. Seek him. My friend, time is short. History is coming to an end. Life is coming to an end. You got to be ready. You got to be ready for that judgment day. History is rolling to a close. Time is rolling to an end. There isn't long left before the day of judgment. You need to get ready now. Before the end comes. The day of God's wrath is near. The day of God's judgment is coming. And we need to get ready now. We need to be right now. We need to come to him now. While you can. God commands everyone to repent. Everyone he commands. God bless you ladies. Everyone he commands to repent. To repent and turn away from that which you know is not right. And turn to him who died for you. The Messiah. Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. Son of God who was promised in Genesis chapter 15 where Abraham was promised a people more than the stars in heaven. Where King David was promised a throne forever. A son will come through his life. Where Isaiah promised that the Messiah would come and suffer for us. That the Messiah would die for us. It was promised in the Holy Scriptures that Christ would come and die for us on that cross. It was promised in the Word of God. And the Messiah came and fulfilled all the prophecies and all the Old Testament types and all the prophecies. And Christ the Messiah came. And a new age appeared, a new resurrection power came when Christ died and rose again. And Christ offers that power. Christ offers that forgiveness to you today. You may have the light of God. You may have the light of heaven in your life right now. But you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive. Abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him, to all who call upon Him in truth. Psalm 145 verse 18. Come! Now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Doesn't matter how bad you've been, you can be forgiven in Jesus today. It doesn't matter how far you stray today, you can know Jesus today. It doesn't matter how much weak you are, it doesn't matter how much you failed you are, you can have a new life today in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter if you're addicted to drugs, it doesn't matter if you're addicted to alcohol, it doesn't matter if you're addicted to materialism, it doesn't matter if you're full of anger and bitterness, it doesn't matter if you're weak, frail, you can be forgiven today. You can have a new life today. You can have a new way today. God bless you. You can have a new life today, a new way today in Jesus Christ. You can have a new start today, a new way today, a new life today, a new direction in your life today. Joy today, power today, love today, glory today. You can be in the kingdom of God today, reigning like a king today in the blood of Jesus, who loved you and died for you. Who loved you and died for you on that cross and gave his life for you on that cross. New power, new joy, new hope, new life in Christ today for you. All in Christ. For Paul says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Whether you have all the money in the world, whether you have all the power in the world, all 
in the world that you may have is nothing compared to Christ. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Christ is altogether lovely. Christ is the King of Kings. Christ is the Lord of Lords. He is over the universe. He is over mankind. And only in Christ can you be forgiven. Only in Christ can you be cleansed. And oh, we live in an evil age. We live in an evil age. In an age that is in rebellion against God. In an age that despises the grace of God. In an age that despises God's word. We live in an age that rejects God and his standards. God is showing you his mercy today. God bless you. God is showing you his mercy today. He's showing you a way out today. He's showing you a way forward today. Out of the quagmire, out of the mess. The way is him, Jesus. That is the way out of the quagmire. That is the way out of the mess. That is the way forward, Jesus Christ. That is the way. He is the only way. In the quagmire, in the mess, he is the way, Christ. He is the way for you, my friend. He is the way. God bless you, brother. He is the way for you, my friend. He is the way in the quagmire. When you can't see a way forward, when you can't see a way forward in your life, when you can't see a way forward, he is the way. He is the way for the nation. When the nation doesn't know where it's going, when the nation is blinded by immorality, when the nation is blinded by immorality, he is the way forward, Christ. Only Christ can save a nation. Only Christ can save a land. Only Christ can build a nation. Only Christ can save a country. Only Christ can save our country. Only Christ can help us in our land. And we have to cry out to Christ as a nation. We have to cry out to Christ in our land. We have to cry out to the Son of God. We have to cry out to Him and cry to the Son of God and say, Lord, we need you as a nation. We need you in our lives. We need you, Christ. Rescue us, help us. We need the Son of God to come and help us in this day and age. We need him in our homes. We need him in our schools. We need him in our colleges. We need him in our universities. We need him in our media. We need Christ most of all. We need him in the universities, the college, the media. We need him in the politicians. Christ, that's who we need. We need Christ to come into our nation and help us. And we need Christ to come into your life to help you. To help you and give you a life, give you a hope, give you a future. You need Christ to help you. Do you believe in Jesus? Uh, yeah. yeah. Do you believe that he uh, died for you on the cross? Yeah. Do you believe that? Yeah, we believe that. Do you believe Jesus died for you on the cross? Yeah. Well, I can hear that. If you do something wrong, if you do something wrong, how do you get forgiven? Are you Christian or are you a Muslim? Muslim, you pray to God. Yeah. So if you sin and you do something wrong, how do you get forgiven in Islam? God bless you, it's lovely to meet you. Pray to God. Pray to God, yeah. But do you know today your sins are forgiven? No, you find out on the day of this. See, that's the difference between Islam and I respect Islam and Christianity. You see, is it in the story, is it in the Quran where it says about Abraham sacrificing his son? Yeah. yeah. And he told to sacrifice, didn't he? And then God provided a ram. Yeah, yeah. Well, we believe that's a prophecy of the future that a final sacrifice will come. So when Jesus came, the prophet John the Baptist, the prophet, said when he saw Jesus, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Yeah? So when Jesus is dying up there, he's so perfect, he's never sinned. He's dying on your behalf. Anything you've ever done wrong, lies, anything. Instead of you getting punished, he died on your behalf. Jesus said this in his word, in, in, in his own words. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now do you know the 99 names of Adam? One of the 99 names is that he's true. Another 99 name is that he's the way. And another 99 name 
He studies the life, the way, the truth, and the life. Those are three names of Allah. Yeah? Jesus said this about himself in John chapter 14. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He uses the three well, names. I have a question. I have a question. You have a New Testament, right? Yes. And that changed. That's a change of the Old Testament, right? How does that make sense? Because why do you think you feel like you have the right to change it? Okay. Well, the Old Testament points to the Messiah. So all the prophets are pointing. So like Psalm 22 was written 1,000 years before Jesus. And he says, they cast lots for my garments. A thousand years later, the soldiers cast lots for Jesus' garments. He says, in Isaiah chapter 9, a virgin will have a child, Bethlehem. Uh, Six hundred years later, Jesus was born a virgin. So all the prophets in the Old Testament are pointing to Jesus. And then the New Testament is Jesus comes. Okay, that's the Gospel, the which the Quran talks about. Do you believe that the Bible is a word of God? It's a little bit different from this one. It is not a regular book, but it was given to us in the book of the same book of the same book. In Christianity, it says in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 16 that God gave a rev uh, inspiration. Right? Came by inspiration in the Greek. Inspiration is God breathed. So when men were writing, to use men, God breathed the words on them. So it's a bit different. It isn't God's word, but it came a different way than it is now. Well, that's questions. I don't mind asking questions. I, I just don't understand how, how the New Testament came about because it's the words of people, not God. Well, let, let me explain. You have the nation of Israel, right? You believe in Abraham. Yeah. So Abraham was given a promise that he would have a people more than the stars, right? So it all starts with Abraham for Islam and Christianity and Judaism. It's Abraham the king. So Abraham was given a promise. And he said, God said to Abraham, I'm gonna judge the Amalekites, but I'm giving them 400 years, then I'll bring my people out of Egypt. This was before they were even in Egypt. So God's people were in Egypt, the Jewish people, he brings them out and he takes them into Canaan. And God gave them laws, don't eat pork, don't do this, don't do that. But it was to the nation of Israel, right? So it's for the nation of Israel. But Israel was the custodian of the prophets. And these prophets, and the teaching that was given to Israel was to point to a future coming of the Messiah. So every prophet says something about the Messiah. Now the Torah were laws given to the Jewish people. That's why some Muslims have said, do you eat pork? I said, no, you don't eat pork. Eh, you don't follow the Bible, right? But that was given to Israel, you see. It was given to the Jews to not eat pork. But when Jesus came, he didn't just come for Israel. He came for everyone. He came for you and me. So that's why I don't have to eat pork. But the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament, don't buy, don't steal, that was given for all time, because it's summed up in loving your neighbor as yourself. That's for all time. But all these laws for Israel were just for Israel. So when Jesus came, he lived a perfect life, and all the laws don't apply to us now, because we follow his life. Okay? Does that make sense? And then Paul and the other apostles, they wrote letters, and all they were doing is expounding what Jesus taught, right? So Luther said, the Bible is the cradle where Christ is laid. So I, I encourage you to, to get your Quran and look at all the references to Jesus, right? Study them. And then take one angel, because the Quran says, read the angels. Take one angel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then study what it says, all the names and titles of the Messiah. And you'll find there are many things that he says in the Quran about Jesus, but then there are many other titles that he doesn't mention that are just in one gospel, let alone four gospels. So, I, you know, I hope that's it. You can ask any other questions. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, mate.